Hi, my scholars, this is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Right here in this video lesson, we are going to do a combo pack, and that is we are going to consider two topics. This includes rational numbers and integers. So we are going to see how these two fit into one another, how they relate, and how these concepts are very useful for us when we relate with mathematical operations. So do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel and right here in this video we are going to walk through the topics integers and rational so rational numbers okay so at first it is quite impossible or it's less meaningful okay for us to um, walk around integers either positive integers or negative integers without talking about where they are actually come from so okay you know their relationship is actually tagged from rational numbers okay and it's also quite incomplete for me to actually talk to us about rational numbers without looking at the the origin of numbers or the expression of numbers okay when it comes to mathematics okay so that is why we are going to trace everything back to the source then make it flow down to rational numbers to integers and at least to the various parts possible okay in this video lesson so join me as we begin with complex numbers so what are complex numbers you know they are numbers that actually comprises of the real parts and the imaginary parts okay so the real numbers you can express them on a number line remember your number line we've used this several times okay in our video lessons okay where you have something like this zero one two you can see minus one minus two so you can express real numbers on this okay so as well you should be able to tell that oh, for a real number you know it has certain properties okay real numbers they are measurable okay just like you can express them here they have concrete values and you can manipulate them you no know? you can actually change the form of of a real number okay from its integer form to decimal form of fractions okay so this is what we should note okay so this is a very uh, quick one for real numbers so let's go to imaginary numbers so imaginary numbers they are actually roots of negative numbers okay so this is what i mean like for instance you are asked to find the square root of minus one okay so if you try punching this on your calculator well you should come back and tell me what you're going to get so this is an imaginary expression okay and imaginary numbers at least for the basics this is what we have represented by i letter i okay so we can tell that the root of minus one is what an imaginary number okay so imaginary numbers are actually talking about the root of negative numbers so le le for instance if i ask to find square roots or the root of minus four so let's see square root of minus four so how do we find this we remember that square root of four can be plus two or minus two isn't it but right here we have minus four so minus four actually mean four times minus one isn't it and from our video lesson on sorts okay you can understand how to do this better this will now imply root four right times root minus one square root of four that is two square root of negative one this is i right so you can see that this is too high do you see it so these are imaginary numbers okay so going further on the real numbers okay we have numbers that we refer to as rational numbers and irrational numbers okay so rational numbers you can express them as ratio of integers you know ratio of two numbers one to another okay so why rational numbers you know they have one or two concepts attached to it which i'm going to explain in this video lesson okay so we have under the rational number we have the non-integers which include decimals fractions okay and we have the integers all right so you can still check our previous video lesson the link is provided in the description below okay where you can learn more about decimals fractions okay so um the rational no rational numbers you can actually put them into this part the non-integers and the integers so for the non-integers we're talking about decimals 
we talk about fractions, we talk about then the other side we talk about integers. Okay, so when we look at decimals, you know, decimals can be repeating, okay, or they can terminate. All right, so let's look at decimals. You know, decimals we will surely find the decimal point, and under decimals, you know, we have the integral part and we have the decimal part. Okay, so so like so something like this. If I have one over two, that is actually zero point five. You can see this part, your integral part. Then that other side okay so like if i have something like this 3 over 4 that is 0 0.75 okay so you can see all of this expression if i have 5 over 2 that makes 2.5 the integral part then this other part okay very well so we can see that the decimal expression okay or in decimal expansion you will notice that sometimes it terminates okay immediately sometimes it goes on okay after repeating the same sequence or after some certain expression and there are times that it doesn't even repeat and it continues flowing okay in such situation it becomes an irrational number okay so irrational numbers we're actually talking about numbers that are expressed okay that when you express them in decimal form and when you try to put them in the light of decimal expansion okay these decimals they keep um going on and on and there is no repetition there's no particular pattern that you can trace that oh, okay after like two numbers okay these numbers will repeat themselves again after like three numbers there will be repetition no there are just different numbers coming up and they are not ending okay so example of such expression includes like root two you know like your root two uh we can say it is 1.14159 like that like that and you see that different numbers keep coming up there is no regular pattern Okay, so like for instance, the base of natural logarithm, your e, is actually an irrational number or irrational expression. Your pi as well. You know, when you have your pi, you can try to express it as 22 over 7, okay, for most cases. And that's 3.142 and the likes, the list goes on. Okay, so you can see that all of this put together actually gives us something very concrete or solid to work with so we can tell confidence that irrational numbers they actually when you see them in the view of decimal expansion okay the the numbers after the decimal points they do not terminate like it's unending and there is no particular pattern for repetition okay so that means irrational numbers you can express them as the ratio of two integers okay you can say it's actually two over five like root two root three root five okay so so for the root two you just know you just get probably maybe 1.4 yeah to be correct about that 1.4 then other numbers follow okay so that is what we have for this presentation so like i was saying on the decimals okay so i i like i said for rational numbers you know the decimals that you find at, that you can refer to as rational numbers you know these decimals they actually terminate or if they don't terminate you know even if they continue there is a pattern that you will see Okay, like for instance, look at this. If I have 1 divided by 3, you see it's going to give me 0 0.3333333. So that tells me that you can see there is a, though it's unending, but there is a repetition of number, at least a number, and that is a 333. Three, three. Okay, so there are some cases whereby it should be after a certain sequence. Okay, like for instance, if I have 1 over 11, okay, so that should give me. 0 0.09090909 and the list goes on so you can see that after the 09 there's another 09 so this is the irrational expression okay you can actually bring it back to this expression okay so that is what we should be looking at for decimals okay so we'll move to the, um, the fractions you know we've talked about fractions a lot you know fractions can be proper like when you have a smaller numerator sitting over a bigger denominator okay so that is what we like for instance your 2 over 5 your 1 over 3 your 30 over 40 you know all of these put together they are proper okay then improper is just the reverse or the reverse of this so that would be like 5 over 2 3 over 1 40 over 30 so you can see all right so and the presence of improper fraction actually we give back two mixed fractions okay so you can see when this comes down it becomes two number one over two okay not in this case because the integer the the denominator here is one okay so if you look at this four over three okay so that should give you zero cancel zero that should give me one number one over three you can see this 
Okay, so this is mixed whole number and fraction. Okay, so this is for the non-integer part of rational numbers. Okay, so let's go to the integers or the integer parts. So an integer, okay, can have a negative or a positive value. Okay, and it also includes zero. Okay, so that is why I tried to split it into two. Okay, the negative whole numbers and the whole numbers. So you can talk about integers as whole numbers and their positive. So when I talk about whole numbers, I'm talking about numbers starting from zero, one, two, three, to infinity. Okay, so when I talk about their negatives, the negative of this now is going to be minus one, minus two, minus three to infinity as well in the negative direction okay so this accounts for integers okay it includes all numbers and their negatives okay so you can see the presence of zero then you can see under all numbers i have zero and natural numbers okay so natural numbers they are actually all numbers okay without zero so if i'm going to refer to natural numbers i'm going to start from one Okay, natural numbers so this starts from one okay you can see that so natural numbers are actually all numbers excluding zero okay so you can see the list so i can refer to natural numbers as positive integers remember that you can use q to represent your rational number symbol q i actually explained that in set theory okay you can go back to that video as well to learn more so q means quotient right so you can use q prime to represent this we use letter z okay to represent this okay somewhat like that then we have your own numbers w then this and natural numbers okay so and as well we can still go further to divide these natural numbers okay we can put them into prime numbers and composite numbers when we talk about prime numbers we are talking about numbers that they only have two divisors or two factors okay one and themselves okay themselves okay like for instance i can say two is a prime number because what are the factors of two they are actually one and two itself seven is a prime number that is one and seven we can see that okay but we should also note that one is not a prime number because the only factor or the only device of one without remainder is actually one itself because if you try dividing one by zero it's going to be undefined okay so one is not a prime number so like i mentioned natural numbers can be further split into prime numbers and words and composite numbers you know composite number they have more than two factors or more than two devices okay so like for instance if i want to talk about composite numbers you know i can talk about numbers like your four you know four has one it has two it has four itself as its factor right so i can talk about six six has one it has two it has three it has six can you see that okay so still under this expression of all numbers i can talk about even numbers odd numbers and what have you okay so it's very important for us that under rational numbers we should talk about and integers as well we should talk about the different operations and different properties that are attached with this concept you know where we actually pull this from you know you can relate this to set theory okay you talk about the associative property you talk about the commutative property you talk about the closed property okay so this is the end of this video lesson this short introduction okay all you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below this is going to take you to the my school website okay there we are provided with enough and simple guidelines on how you can have access to this full video content by subscribing Okay, and also do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you.